What is up, guys? So many people already in here. That's amazing. Seriously, I swear every day it just gets better. Death, Tristan, Jay, Mikey, Rook, Kylie. Hello, Steve. Hi, everyone. Hope your day is well. I know a new shirt, right? Like, I have all of my clothes now. I don't just have to wear the same, like, seven shirts over and over. It's amazing. How's the day, guys? And yes, we are cooking Tristan's meal today. Some inspiration from Arizona. And I see that Jay has already figured out that I switched over to stream elements. So glad we got that all working and the notifications are not sideways anymore. So thanks to Rush for that. Honestly, he helped me a lot this morning getting everything set up. There's still a bit more to go. I haven't got song requests or anything like that yet, but for sure by Friday, I'm thinking we will be good to go on that. Hey, Lemon, how are you? 30 miles per hour winds and it destroyed your yard. Brutal, Trist. <laughs> RIP sideway notifications, keeping us on our toes. Thanks for the host as well, guys. Appreciate it always. Mikey, you played Fortnite tonight and got your first kill. Well, that's a good thing. I think it would take me quite a while to actually get my first kill in that game. Like, I've never played with a mouse and keyboard before, so good for you. Yay, that's amazing, Lemon. You went for another run? Good job. I know it sucks, but sometimes you just got to do it. Get that routine going. I'm good today. Did a bunch of stuff, went for a walk at the beach. It was beautiful. Hello, Chickadee China. Hello, Extinction. I know. Sorry, you have to watch me on the subway. I don't know if it cuts out. When we were in Vancouver, though, when we took the SkyTrain underneath, we actually had service all the way through. So I don't know if that's how it is where you are. <laughs> Thanks, China. Am I going to make the pasta? I'm not making the penne pasta today, guys, because I don't have an extruder yet. Hopefully, maybe down the line, I will get one. But I can't make it from scratch at this point. So we're just going to take it easy, focus on all of our ingredients instead. Okay, so Wellness Wednesday as well. I think this meal will make you feel good when you eat it. I would literally put pesto on anything, I think, as long as it's made fresh. Cook with Hannah with the host. Thanks, everyone. Woohoo! Okay, so pesto, penne pasta with chicken. So the chicken is not gonna be sauced up at all. I'm just gonna let it speak for itself. We'll just pan fry it off. Cause I don't wanna cover up all that beautiful like crispy chicken skin with a kind of wet sauce. So we'll just keep the pesto in with the penne pasta later on and that way we'll get a really nice color contrast on the plate as well. Okay, sounds good, lemon. And then balsamic roasted tomatoes to go around the dish as well. So we'll probably do about four cups of those, but keep in mind that when you roast tomatoes, they actually shrink about half in size. So always do more than you think you need. Hi, Mies, how are you? And then our other veg is a roasted cauliflower. I've never made this before with parmesan, lemon, and capers. And I, I believe Betty has made this one before and she told me about it and I was like, I need to try this. The title is so old, ugh. See, I thought I was like so good and on all my stuff today. Well, at least the menu command in chat is on point. <laughs> Guys, just, just call me out. Someone has to. <laughs> Maybe one day we'll get it right. Ooh. 
What's up, steampunk? Nice, Mikey. Yeah, get those trolls out of there. Boom. Okay, we're good. Probably will still stay that way for a bit, but it's updated now. Laying down as usual, me. It's nice, nice. I'm good. The sun is shining. I'm happy. Death, I will message you later on with all the new commands, and I'll get you in with that stuff. You wanted more pork. I know. It was so good yesterday, guys. My whole family was like, you need to make this like every two weeks. <laughs> I was like, okay, it's pretty easy. White Spiros, hello. Mikey, you're dancing with the bot, watch out. You are French, nice, I am half French as well. My dog is punching the door to go out just a sec. You're the worst. You're the little butthead. This is literally her routine. I don't know if you guys have like caught note of that, but every time I start streaming, she comes downstairs and asks to go outside. She's like, excuse me, you will pay attention to me. Not your first mod rodeo, sweet. Okay, so timeline. I'm thinking this meal will take just about over an hour to make from start to finish if you guys want to make this for yourselves. For the chicken, we're just going to simply pan fry it, like I said, and then we'll finish it in the oven. So we're just going to crisp up that skin on the outside and then it should take about 10 to 15 minutes in the oven depending on the temperature that we use. So about 20 to 25 minutes total for the chicken. So keep that in mind later on when it's closer to serving time. I would probably start around half an hour ahead because keep in mind the chicken will have to rest as well before we cut into it. That is key. We're not gonna rush anything. Oh, thanks, Death. I think I have to add you as a super mod for that, but I'm not sure. You probably know more than me with stream elements. Hey, clapped, sup, sup. Okay, so the pasta takes seven minutes to boil till al dente. That means it's tender, but it still has a little bit of bite because keep in mind, we have to reheat it later on with our pesto sauce. So we don't wanna completely cook the pasta because we will reheat it again and that way if we completely cooked it before, it is just gonna get overcooked and kind of fall apart. That's something you should be very stingy about. And that was honestly one of the first things that I nailed in culinary school and it made me so happy. Everyone was so scared to make pasta the first day in like the dining room and I was like, I'll cook it and I cooked it perfectly. I was so happy. It's not that hard either. Typically the directions on the back of like your bag or box are correct. So this penne says 10 minutes. So we can test that later on. You can literally see it right there. Al dente, 10 minutes. It might take a little bit longer just cause that noodle is a bit thicker. So we'll see. And then both the roasted tomatoes and the cauliflower will take about 45 minutes to prep and cook. So ingredients. If you guys aren't in the Discord yet, get on in there. Because that's where all of the recipes are. So feel free to click that link right there. And you'll get into our server and all the recipes are under the recipe section. And everything's in PDF, so it's really, really easy to print out and read. Shadow, welcome in. Fiscal, you're making jerk chicken? Yum. Are you gonna keep it pretty spicy? 
Or are you gonna like doll it down a little bit? Oh, I guess, yeah, you guys can see my tattoos now, hey? Dang it. <laughs> this is my beat tattoo. I don't know if I can get any closer. It says Bon Appetit. Beets are my favorite vegetable, for sure. I just love the color of them. I love anything purple, guys. That's a fact. Okay, so ingredients tonight. Obviously, we need penne pasta, chicken of your choice. I think I have a mix of breasts and legs in the bag that I pulled from the freezer. Cauliflower for our roasted. We need cherry tomatoes. And then for our pesto, obviously, it's basil based. And then it does need a nut. Typically, pine nuts are used in pestos, but I'm doing pistachios today. A little bit cheaper in price point, so keep that in mind. But you could also make it with like almonds, walnuts, really whatever you want. Or you can leave the nuts out if you have an allergy as well. Do I speak French? I don't fluently speak French, sadly, but I can read it pretty good. But there's no way that I can form a sentence back to you. Nice, Mikey. Welcome in then, dude. Fiscal, you're making it very spicy. I like it. Push those limits. Tristan, garlic bread is actually tomorrow with the beef and barley soup. Newsroom. Am I familiar with Jewish customs? Not really. But the cool thing was in my last job in the big catering kitchen, they actually did a lot of Jewish stuff because the owner of the company is Jewish. So I kind of learned a little bit during the Christmas season while I was there for like only a month. But I do like their traditions and their food. Honestly, a lot of people think it's bland, but it's totally not. I love how simple it is. Okay, so order of prep. We need to prep our roasted tomatoes. We're going to do that first. These don't have to be served warm. They can be served like lukewarm or even a little bit cold. So that's up to you, but you can serve it warm if you feel like you'll like that better. So we'll get those done first, get them out of the way. That way our oven is free for our cauliflower because I do only have two oven racks in this oven now. And then we will make our basil pesto while those are roasting and then we'll prep our cauliflower to roast. Obviously, we won't roast our cauliflower until we're about half an hour, 40 minutes out. That way it has ample time. We will cook our pasta ahead of time, toss it with some olive oil just so it doesn't stick together. That way that is ready to just get tossed with the sauce when we're closer to serving. We'll season up our chicken. I actually pulled out a salt that I haven't used yet out of like my salt box that I have not really unpacked either. This is a savory Thanksgiving herb salt. So I smelt it and it's actually really, really nice smelling. I'm guessing it has like thyme, sage, savory, a bunch of those. Oh, there it goes. So ingredients, fleur de sel, basil, oregano, savory, and thyme. So I thought that would be really good to use on the chicken. And this salt is actually made in Canada. So that's amazing. Main Street Group. So we're going to use that on the chicken. I think that will go well. That way it's just not just like plain salt and pepper. Jazz it up a little bit at least. And then, like I said, closer to the end, we'll roast our cauliflower and then start to pan fry our chicken and finish it in the oven. And about five minutes out, we will heat up our pot again with the penne and just toss it with our pesto. And that's it. Pretty simple tonight. What is lukewarm? It's like room temperature. Good question. <laughs> Big Steve, Canada. We're in Canada. Get in here. Get your butt.
Yeah, it's in between hot and cold. <laughs> Yeah, why do you why do you even have to work, Ruth? Really? Can't you just sit at home and watch cooking streams all day? My cabinet is open because that is where the camera is chilling now. Just so we can get that overhead kind of set up. I'm sure we'll kind of fool around with it as we go. Maybe like drill. I don't know if we can drill anything into there, but so far that's been the best way to do it. I know it's a little bit annoying, but we're good. We're chill with it. Okay, so let's start. Let's do up our tomats. Some beautiful BC grown cherry tomatoes. They are so good and sweet. I always try and use local produce and meats as much as possible. And luckily being on the West Coast, it is possible more often than not. Is there a retractable tripod on Amazon where you can mount the camera and move it? Oh, maybe, Jay. I don't know if that would get in the way, though. Hi, Palsh. Thanks for the five biddies, man. Okay, so we do have to slice our tomatoes in half. Don't drill into the overhead vent. I mean, I would not do that without checking. Luckily, my dad is a handyman contractor, so he knows all that stuff. So I wouldn't do anything crazy like that without asking. I'm sure he'd be like, we're not doing that. <laughs> we're going to put our tomatoes in this nice red bowl. I think that's going to be great. Got a little, little honing action on this. We'll use our baby knife today for our tomatoes. Just do a helmet cam, that would be epic. Suction cups, that's a good one too. I'm writing that down, steampunk. Because we've been trying to think about what we could use that looks better. But would it stay on the stainless steel? Guys, I can't play any songs yet. I know. I got my Twitch knife and my Twitch apron. We're good to go. It's like I was set up for Twitch with my like purple obsession. Yeah, no songs yet clapped, but hopefully Friday. I'll have more time in the morning that day to work on some more stuff on stream elements. Get it all set up. Any updates on the apron? So the last time I spoke to him, which was, I believe last week, he said it would be about a month. So I'm guessing, let's say three weeks from now, I'll probably have it. Maybe sooner though. I mean, I always like to kind of ballpark it later than I think. And that way it'll be like a nice surprise if I do end up getting it sooner. Okay, death, gonna check that out. Oh, the heck? That's a maze. Yeah, we were looking at like the gorilla tripod mounts, but we're like, uh, I don't know about that one either. Thank you, death. That's amazing. I'm sure Sammy will literally order it up tonight when he sees that. Paul, you're playing with Streamlabs right now. 
Streamlabs is a great place to start, honestly. I think Stream Elements is a little bit overwhelming if you're just starting out, but switching over to it after you use Streamlabs for a bit is effortless. Like you can literally import all of your alert settings and everything like that right from Streamlabs. So good luck and have fun, Polish. Yeah, Jay, I'll set it up on Friday morning before the stream for song requests and hopefully we'll be bumping in the afternoon. Death, what are you even streaming? I didn't even know this. Steampunk, good question. So if you hop onto my channel page, I linked a bunch of my gear that I use every day in the Amazon extension on the very bottom part. So feel free to check that out. That has my knife that I use every day and honestly, I would recommend it 100%. The brand is Shun. It's a little bit expensive, but it is very, very worth it because you'll probably have that knife for the rest of your life. But I also have Hankles. I have Victorinox. I mean, I think the most important thing when you're going to buy a knife is to feel it in your hand because it should feel comfortable. It shouldn't feel awkward to hold and use because all the handles with the different companies are different. Okay, that's amazing, Death. I'm pumped. I can't wait to check it out more. Nice, Polish. Yeah, I mean, I'm still using OBS as well. And everything just seems to be working really well. Oh, you're doing cooking streams. Yes! Saturday, Sunday, and Wednesday to start. That's a maze. Don't even worry about it, Steampunk. Don't say sorry. It's great to ask questions. How often do I order food to go or do I always cook for myself? Nice. Um... I cook Monday to Fridays every week and then typically Saturdays we go out for dinner and then Sundays I also don't cook typically and we usually have family dinner that day so my mom would cook something and then we would all eat together which is good honestly everyone's been feeling really healthy with me cooking so much because it's, it's crazy how much you don't notice, like eating out really affects the body. It's crazy. That's pretty cool, Jay. Yeah, I love my Anova. Haven't used it in a while though. That's true, Paul. Yeah, the Curadori, I remember those commercials. <laughs> what is it, Canadian Tire? Yeah, hand over the tomats. All of them. Let me try one. Mm. Mm hmm. Those taste like tomatoes, like in your face. Sweet and briny and delicious. Thanks, Moss. Yeah, Betty made me these. They are amazed. So, fresh thyme picked from the garden. That's what we're going to be seasoning our tomatoes with. I'm leaving the garlic out of these this time just because the pesto does have quite a bit of garlic. So let's not overpower it with garlic. Plus we did have quite a bit of garlic yesterday in the rice as well. I know Trist, where is Jim? Jim, where have you gone? <laughs> yes, Polish, it's true. 
Yeah, we have a home hardware in Souk here, but then we don't have one in Langford. We have Home Depot in Langford instead. It's like, what? All of the hardware stores. So what's everyone been eating today? Any good foods been consumed? Or are you cooking something amazing or going out to eat? Okay, that's good. I'm gonna leave the little stems on because they are not very tough. And this just needs a nice chop. We'll go pretty fine here. That way the flavor can get distributed really nice and evenly. Oh man, it's so true, Death. Yeah, I remember when I did like my detox when I first started my like bodybuilding. This was a couple years back, but crazy, crazy feeling for like the first month. Like no sugar, like no processed anything. But, like after that you feel so good and you don't even wanna like eat anything sugary. You just want real food. I know. Sugar is like love. I'm s I swear that's like what makes the world go round. Sugar is a drug for sure. You're having Chinese food, nice. Oh, that's always a good go-to. Tristan, yeah, you love the sugar. Oh, nice, Trist. You had your pesto pasta today? So you ate with Kate then, just at different times. Okay, other seasonings going in with our tomatoes. So the thyme has been chopped. Let's add in our olive oil and balsamic vinegar. I would say equal parts of each. You just want it to be evenly coated. And that will help the tomatoes from drying out too much as well. Oh, nice moss grilled quail at the supermarket. Yum. Grilled quail is the way to go. The one in my mind that's like always stuck is grilled quail glazed with pomegranate juice. Super, super good. That's amazing fiscal. Yeah, I mean, with me being in the kitchen this much, it was not good for me because I couldn't taste the food that I was cooking, right? Like, I felt very disconnected from my job. So that's why I didn't continue doing that route. Now I just, like, eat intuitively and make sure I go outside a lot. And so far, it's been working. I feel a lot better than like restricting my body all the time. Sometimes that's not the best thing that you need, even though it's what you think you want. Okay, salt and pepper is in. We're just gonna give that a toss. And I'm gonna turn on the oven. Let's do 450 Fahrenheit, so pretty hot. But that way the tomatoes will get a nice char on the outside because that's where our flavor is going to come from. 
I love this oven. It has like a countdown timer to when it's gonna be hot. So it's given me 14 minutes. Night, Kylie. Have a good one. <laughs> Lemon, yet. Yeah. yeah, don't cut out like all sugars. You don't have to completely deprive yourself. Just don't eat it as much as you want. Have like one special day a week. Dang, this smells good already. Now I just want to get like some mozzarella and just sit there and eat it with these tomatoes without them even being roasted. Because the tomatoes would be good just like this. Just roasting them concentrates the flavor that much more. Mm. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do it on this sheet pen. Need to grab some parchment. Fresh piece that got a little bit destroyed. We'll be okay though. Joe Curry with the follow. Welcome in. Welcome, welcome. What countries would I like to go to? Great question. Well, honestly, I know since we made the Filipino food last night, I definitely want to go there after everything we learned about that country. I think it would be an amazing trip. And... There's still a bit of Southeast Asia that I want to explore. Like I've never been to Vietnam and obviously like China and Japan are on the list as well. I don't know. It's something about the Asian cuisine that I just, I just love. I love all of the ingredients that they use. And there's still a lot of Europe that I haven't seen. Like Portugal is still for sure on my list. I don't know. Honestly, claps. That question is too hard to answer because I definitely am infected with a travel bug and I quite often dream of going places, but it's been a while. That's for sure. But hopefully with me switching up my lifestyle now, I'll have more time and money to do more stuff and not just cook for like hundreds of people a day. Okay, so that's all spread out. You can see there's a little pool of balsamic and stuff in the middle there. So we might have to give it a little toss about halfway through just so it evenly coats everything. Oh, nice death. Yeah, you've never been to Mexico. It's super, super nice. Very relaxing, those places. There's something about the water and the beach, right? Just like draws people in there. Okay, this looks amazing. So we're just gonna put those aside right now until the oven is hot. Okay, next up, let's make our pesto fun. And I'm just gonna do it in the blender. We want it to come out really nice and smooth. Hey, oh Matt, how are you today? Hey, Extinction, you made it back. Back from the subway. That's a pretty good price, Trist. Like, really good price. So I have a couple different kinds of basil today. This is the basil that I got from the store. So you can see it's pretty massive in size. And then... We just picked up a basil plant for outside on Monday. So I picked some of those as well. 
from the plant. So we'll get a mix of both different kinds. So we need about two cups here packed down. So let's get to picking. Opterix, hi. How is it? Oh, Matt, yeah, you should go to sleep already. <laughs> Thanks for checking in, though, dude. <laughs> Did you have a good day? So we don't want the stems in here because they are quite tough. And they won't blend up very nice. So just pick up all the leaves. Packed like sardines. Oh, I hate when the trains are like that. I get a little bit claustrophobic, not gonna lie. I always just like stand beside the door so I can have an easy exit if anything bad happens. <laughs> nice, Omat. Getting that internship done. That's exactly what I said, Opterix. I was like, I just want to take these tomatoes, how they are marinated right now. Grab a piece of fresh matzah and just sit down and get to eating. Because yes, like the smell of this, ugh. How can you beat that combo? I don't know why this just popped in my head, but I just went back to culinary school in the dining room when we would cook for people. At one point, I was in charge of like the amuse bouche, which is like before you even start eating, it gets brought out to the table and it's supposed to wake up your taste buds. And it's free, like you don't have to pay for these, it's just like compliments of the chef. And I remember making a tomato basil sorbet and it was so, so good. All right, Omat, stay thick, my dude. And happy hump day. Halfway through the week already. Cheers to that. Yes, exactly, Extinction. That's exactly what I do. <laughs> like, this is my spot. You guys can all go around. Okay, so that's going in the blender first. That way all the other ingredients will kind of weigh down the basil leaves and it'll blend up really nice, like so. Next up, we need some garlic. So two to three cloves, I'm gonna go with three. Lemon, you made Meyer lemon squares with basil. That sounds so good. Mm, lemon and basil. A lot of stuff does pair nicely with basil though. Like blueberry and basil is always good. Strawberry and basil, really good. Oh, when we were at the beach today, the tide was way out. And we looked down the coast and you can see like five deer just like doing stuff in the water. And it's like, well, that is like a good surf and turf meal right there. Hey, garlic's in. Next up, pistachios. It says one cup, it's quite a bit, but also this will help thicken the pesto as well. So it's not as oily, right? 
Oh, sashes everywhere. Okay, that's good. And then we just need a little bit of lemon juice. Before that, I'm gonna zest the lemon first for the cauliflower. So it's always pretty hard to zest once you've cut it in half. So let's do that and we'll just set the zest aside for later on. <laughs> Optrix. How did they even trust you plebs to do that? That's amazing. Dishwasher is like one of my favorite, favorite jobs now in a kitchen. Like, I can just crush dishes all day. To me, that's like the most peaceful part about being in the kitchen now, is just washing dishes. That's awesome, Lemon. So did you make it better then? You should make this. Jay, you love dishwashing? I know. I am not opposed to it. Okay, now we got some even better smells in here now. Like lemon zest. Ugh. Very like springtime flavors today. I'm liking it. Do we have an Ikea tryst? We don't. We have to go to Vancouver if we want Ikea stuff or have it shipped here. So I think half a lemon juice is going to be perfect for this. <laughs> I love how you guys were dishwashers. That makes my life. You know the struggle. You always preferred washing the big pots and pans because it was less crowded. Yeah, that makes sense. Plus, you can't break those things. You can easily drop plates and stuff and be like, ah, oh, I fudged up. But the challenge of trying to wash as many dishes as possible without breaking any, that's fun. Okay, we're pretty much there. We need a quarter cup of parm. You could also use Asiago cheese as well. It's really up to you. But I have these little parm petals, so I'm gonna use those. Nice lemon, nice. Yeah, I mean, I always say a recipe is just a guideline, right? This might be too much. Let's do like that much. And I, I also don't like using too much sugar in my baked goods. So I always like to balance it out with salt. Okay, so last thing going in here is just some olive oil and then salt and pepper. What? That is so cool, Jay. That's like top chef challenge. Yeah, I'm not using any pine nuts, Lemon. I'm using pistachios. They have a little bit more mild taste than pine nuts. 
But I'm not super picky with the nuts that go into my pistachio, as long as there's something with that nutty flavor to kind of balance everything else out. Okay, so oil. It says a quarter to two thirds of a cup of olive oil, but I'm just gonna pour some in and see how this blends up and then we'll add more as we think it's needed. Oh, the chicken. So extinction, the chicken. I can turn this up now. So this is everything going in. We'll add the salt and pepper after this is blended up a little bit, guys. So we got our basil, pistachios, garlic, olive oil, lemon zest, and cheese. So for the chicken extinction, all I'm doing is seasoning it with salt and pepper. I'm using this like herb salt that has basil, oregano, savory, and thyme, but feel free to just use salt and pepper. And I'm just gonna pan fry it skin side down so it gets nice and golden. And then I'll flip it over, put it into probably a 400 degree oven. You can go up to 450 though, Fahrenheit. And then it'll only take about 10 to 15 minutes to finish cooking off in there. So it's like pan fried slash roasted. And I'm not putting any pesto on the chicken because that would burn in the oven. Never put any herbs on like that. Always wait until afterwards. The fun part is to watch everyone run around crazy and having no clue what to do. Yeah, I bet. Burning the guest food. <laughs> oh, good times, Jay. Thanks for bringing that back. And yes, dishes with music. You always need music if you're gonna do dishes. I just usually make it like a workout almost. Just dance and sing around, have fun. It's important. Do I think cashews would work? That would be delicious, Lemon. Any kind of nut would work in this, I think. Maybe pecans as well. I don't know how strong that flavor would be with the basil. Do we have Crate and Barrel in Canada? We do. Okay, I'm going to start to blend this up real low and then we'll see how smooth it gets. Yeah, Crate and Barrel is seriously dangerous. I try and stay away from those stores. So I'll be like, I need this and this and this. Oh wait, look at that. <laughs> Clap, you're still getting yelled at by the bot. And you guys heard the oven go off, so let's put the tomatoes in. I'm gonna start with 10 minutes and then go from there. Hey, we're going in. The initial kind of breaking up of everything done. I'm just gonna grab a spatula and scrape down the sides, but like I said, need way more olive oil. And I may have added more cheese and nuts than it called for, but that's my own fault. <laughs> Nightbot. I can take Nightbot out. Mm. 
Just match the offer. I love it, Death. Bowl for bowl. Yeah, unmod night bot. Get out of here. Chief, thank you for the host, my dude. There we go. Let's do this. down but that is looking so good and then I think we'll reserve just a little bit of the pasta boiling water as well for when we toss the pesto back into the pasta that way it'll just like perfectly coat it I don't know there's something about that starchy water that you can't beat How's it going, Chief? It's good to see you in here again, man. And but, hello! All my peeps are here. Love it. They'll block people for 10 minutes if they post a link twice. What? Okay, I'm getting rid of that crazy bot. I did change some of the settings, but I think I have to go further in. I see it still being a butthead. You hate to pesto me, but how much oil did I use? I'm going to say I used about half a cup in total. This should be our last blend up here, guys. Uh to taste this and add salt and pepper so there's our consistency you can see it's pretty thick but I think that'll coat it really nicely like eating this with the chicken being dipped into it oh so good so good collapsed you dropped your adobo all, all over your hoodie I don't know if that'll come out to be honest My brows are glowing. Thanks, bud. I know the sun is still shining. It feels amazing. Okay, yum. That looks so good. Flavor is really, really nice. Just need salt and pepper. I think I'm going to add the other half of lemon as well just for some extra brightness. And that will pull out more of the basil flavor. Cause our nuts are rich and our cheese is really rich. And same with the oil too. So you kind of have to bump it up after you add all those things. <laughs> Do I like country music? What were the other questions yesterday? Do you like country music? Do you only speak English? <laughs> Oh man. You draw yours in thick? Yes, girl. That's a good way to do it because that'll help you kind of grow them out as well, keeping that shape there. You got this. S and P, my friends. Mm. 
That is so, so good, Osterix. I still have my grandma's original KitchenAid mixer, like the little white one. It's not dead yet. And I'm hoping it lasts like forever because that thing is honestly better than the ones you can buy now. No joke. And I almost killed it using it in a restaurant to make the desserts. And then I was like, you guys need to buy me a mixer because I'm not breaking this one. That is too special to me. Okay, let's blend this up one last time. Ooh, I hear the tomatoes sizzling already. Good question, Lemon. So I don't know if there's a Costco by you, but Costco has, I think the jar is about 750 mils of a pesto. That's really, really good. And I think it might be, let's say between like eight and $12, which I think is a good price point because all the ingredients are fresh. Like you can see the cheese and taste it. You can see the nuts. The basil is awesome. It doesn't turn brown. That's my favorite one so far. And it does have to stay in the fridge, so that's how you know it's fresh. And I suppose that's another reason why the lemon juice is added, because it's gonna help the leaves from oxidizing makes sense guys okay let's go in for a second taste should be the final one mm -hmm. i'm excited for this like i said i would put pesto on almost anything so i'm just gonna leave that in the blender it doesn't have to be refrigerated right away and then we'll use it later on Yum. There's about a minute left on the tomatoes, but I can tell they're not done yet. They'll probably take a good like half an hour to roast. What did I miss guys? We are caught up. Olive Garden has a good pesto. Nice. That's a lot of pesto. I know. It said it would make a cup, but I think we have about two there. I suppose I could just transfer it out now. How do you shut the timer off without shutting the oven off? Ah. First world problems. <laughs> Handy dandy two cup container. Oh yeah. Guys. Betty made a pie today, strawberry rhubarb for our family friend whose birthday it is. Are you ready to see it? Hello. <laughs> Can I see Did it? you make a flower? I made a flower. She made a flower in it. So we used the rhubarb from the farm, except the oven upstairs does not work. So we have to bake it down here. Should it stay out or put, put it, it in, in the, the fridge thing? and don't forget to egg wash it. Okay. When you're ready. You're not going to start baking it before I'm back, right? Where are you going? I'm just going into town. No. Okay. I, I might, but... Then I would tell you how long, but... Like, okay, how long? 
20 minutes at 400, about an hour at 350. Okay. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. I'll be back soon. Now we know, guys. The pie will be taken care of. We can't mess it up, though. Okay, I'm gonna restart our timer. They're just starting to kind of explode where the skin is coming off. So let's do another 10. Oh. <laughs> I can't do it. Okay, we're good. Okay, let's take care of this pesto and that way we can soak the container. It'll be easier to use. I know, so Betty's going in to get some ice cream right now and it's gonna be so good. Honestly guys, for me to make a pie, is like very stressful because Betty makes the best pies. Like no joke. It's like I can't make a pie until she's gone. Cause it's just terrifying. Like she seriously makes the best pies. I don't know how she does it. And this pesto should stay in the fridge for at least a couple weeks. Obviously try and use nice clean utensils if you take it out of the jar. And then maybe that way it'll stay even longer. I'm not looking at chat right now. I'm trying to get this stuff out. It's sticky. And that way we can kind of see how much we ended up with. I'm gonna say about one and a half cups. Clean it up. Yeah, one and a half cups or one and three quarters. I'd always rather have extra than not enough. Hey, that is done. Yum. Okay, I'm going to catch up now. Jay, thanks for the biddies. Fiesta party, what? Rook, you won the lottery. Lucky duck. The $2 ticket. I have a scratch ticket in my thing I still have to take in. I won a free ticket, so that means that's like one good thing, I think. Am I gonna use lemon pepper today? I think I'll use it on the cauliflower. I just need to find it. I think it might be upstairs in the other kitchen. Oh, Jay, yeah, buy a new oven. So the funny thing is, is we didn't do like a formal inspection on the house. I mean, my dad looked at all of the major things, but for some reason we didn't look in the oven and the element is literally just like budged up. So he went to make breakfast the other morning and he's like, you have to use your oven downstairs because this one is screwed. And they can't get like any money back for it, obviously, because the inspection and everything like that has already been done. So just need a new oven. It is here, but we just have to wait for a gas line to get put in.
I think strawberry rhubarb is my favorite pie as well. Ah, but that's so cute. She's very self-conscious of her looks and I don't know why. She's literally adorable. Butcher the pie. No, guys. Don't make me, like, more scared than I already am. Like, I had to write down those directions so I didn't mess it up. Hello, ask me anything. Welcome in. I'm just catching up. Yes, Mossborg. Got to create that Instagram cake account to show everything off. <laughs> Just throw it. This pie is raw. She would totally go Ramsey on me. Hey, we're back. We're back, we're back. Hey, next up on the list. Hi, Bashi. You wanna say hi? We need a posh minute, guys. We're doing pretty good so far. We don't have too much stuff left. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Good girl. <laughs> She's like, I'm not supposed to jump up. I can't do it. Hi. <laughs> what are you doing? What? What? Ah! Are you happy? Speak. <laughs> okay. Nope. Take it easy. Take it easy. Oh God. No. 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 Hey, it's okay. I think that means it's her dinner time. She says yes. <laughs> hey, helicopter. I just saw you were in here. She's a little too exuberant. I mean, she's 11 years old, guys, and she's still like that. I have to feed her upstairs, though, real quick. So I just turned the timer off. I will literally be back in two minutes. I just need to feed this pupper because, what is it, almost four? She needs to relax. You still have 20 minutes, lady. Because the next thing up, we're going to prep our cauliflower to roast. So I have two big bags. Because once again, whenever you roast stuff, it does shrink a little bit in size. So always buy more than you think you need. Start the timer. Okay, let's do. Let's do it. That's amazing, Mies. Okay, let's go.
I'm back. What was it, two minutes? Yes. Oh my God, Mii's picture of her doggo is in Discord. I have to look right now. Tristan, I just saw all of your chicken pesto pasta. Unreal. Yes, Extinction. You're going to be cooking with Kate, kind of. See you soon. Okay. Holly time. I suppose we should check our tomatoes though. Oh, hello. They're doing stuff. Baby sizzling and looking good. I think they're done. So I think we should bake the pie now so that it's ready later on for dinner. Because if we wait till later, then we are going to have the cauliflower and the chicken in the oven. How good does that look? I think that is perfect. We don't want to dry them out too much. Like we still want the tomatoes to be really nice and juicy. And that means I'll just have to turn the oven down a bit. Yum. Hello. That's heavenly. So we can let those cool off. Opterix, how many tons of sunscreen lotion end up in coral reefs each year? How much? That's going to be a sad amount, isn't it? I know, this looks so good. Hopefully the balsamic just kind of like soaks into them as they cool down. But I'm pretty stoked about that. So like I said, let's turn down our oven. What did she say? 400 for 20 minutes? Fourteen thousand tons of sunscreen lotion. That's disgusting. Okay, let's get into this collie. Oh, because it literally bleaches the corals. That's so sad. <laughs> yeah, if only it worked that way, Lemon. So these florets are pretty big. So we're going to cut them down into like nice bite-sized pieces. Maybe something like that. You don't want them to go too small because it'll just fall apart. You don't want to go too big because then it's just awkward to eat, right? <laughs> We're woke. And I'll figure, oh. Cauliflower vacuum is here. I'll figure out something to do with the leftovers in this bag. But I'm not gonna throw that out. That's just a waste for no reason. I'll give Posh all the small pieces that won't roast up good. She can vacuum while she's waiting here. <laughs> she's like, I've hit the lottery as well. This is amazing. I can just imagine her with her Hungarian accent. That's all I think about. Okay, so let's break this down. I think that's okay for size. But you want all the sizes to be nice and even. That way it'll roast up good. You won't get like crunchy pieces or mushy pieces. It'll all just be perfect. Mm. 
And then these are gonna roast on a sheet pan that's lined. You can use parchment. I'm gonna use my Silpat sheets and see how they work. And I typically don't trim off the stalks or stems of these leafy vegetables or flowering vegetables. Yeah, cauliflower crumb frittata. Love it, lemon. I'm just gonna put those onto the sheet pan now. Oh, guys, and we got our dishwasher last night too. So Sammy is picking up all the parts to put it in today when they get home, I think, or later on after the stream. We're pretty stoked. Even though doing dishes by hand does not bother me. <laughs> Clapped. Hell no. These crazy doggos. I love her little eye in the corner of the <laughs> screen. She really is eyeing up the collie, isn't she? Tris, you refuse to do dishes ever. Yeah, that is fair, Opterix. Like, what does it take to do dishes by hand? Not much, especially if you don't eat or cook a lot of crazy stuff. One pot meals are always a good go-to. <laughs> Rook. I know, how could you not give in to them? They're just so cute. What? I love pities. Give me all of the pities. So this is pretty perfect how this fit on here. One bag on the one sheet pan. I'm not going to spread it out too crazy right now because we still have to season it up and stuff. And it's nice to have the Silpats actually fit sheet pans. lemon your dishwasher is broken she just like flips the table day is ruined half chihuahua half fox <laughs> lemon i think you're like betty like there's not one day where she doesn't complain about doing the dishes and that's okay like it's not for everyone it's just hilarious so it's like this is the routine but she still is like not happy with it but then she doesn't want to put any of her dishes in the dishwasher so like there is no middle ground i don't know what to do He's got a big bushy tail. Aw, that sounds adorable. On dog. Hi, on dog. I was just talking about you. Where are your ears burning? Yeah, Betty and you would be hilarious doing dishes together in the kitchen. Yeah, I'm with you on that one, though, Opterix. Like, folding laundry, not really my jam. Holy, that's just, like, all for doggos. There's not even a florette on there. We'll set that aside for her.
That's hilarious, Lemon. I know. I still have laundry to fold after this, too. It's sitting on the bed. It's like, ah, it's weighing down on me. Ain't nobody got time for that. Rook. Blowing me up with the biddies. Thank you, man. It's much appreciated. You know this. Milk bar. What are you saying, Elvin? What did I miss? And hello. You went to milk bar. What? What did you get? Om dog with the biddies. Thank you, guys. Okay, last piece. Except for doggo's pieces. She's so pro at that. We've been doing that with her since she's a puppy. We used to flick popcorn kernels off of the counter and she would catch it like every time. She's got some good reflexes still even though she's an old lady. Bomb um, dog banned that guy. <laughs> what? Oh my god. Elvin. I'm so jealous. Cereal milk soft serve. And crack pie. I need to make crack pie still. Like that's a must. How could you not want to make that? I believe that though, but I'm sure it is a pain in the butt trying to fold all that laundry for all your kiddos. They probably go through a buttload of it. Yes, Fiscal, grill up that jerk chicken. Love it. Here, let me just clean all these cauliflower bits off. And then I think we can put the pie into the oven. I know it hasn't beeped, but it was higher in temp before. And what did she say? We have to egg wash it? We gotta egg wash the pie right now. Sounds good, Om um, Dog. <laughs> Biggest piece ever. She wasn't ready for that one. Betty's pie. The pie of our eyes. Just need to go grab an eggy. Yeah, we always wash our eggs. Scales for cooking? Yeah, that's a good one, Mossport. Well, especially for baking. Like doing anything in grams. Really good. Duck eggy, it is. I didn't make this, Elvin. Betty made this. I'm not taking any, any credit for it. 
and I won't even take credit for baking it. <laughs> Just in case it turns out bad. But I think we'll be fine. I'm excited for like all of this pie crust. It looks so good. To measure your hops and, <laughs> and it works for other green substances as well. Do those substances smell like hops as well? We won't get to cut into it. I think we'll cut into it still, guys. But at the same time, I don't know because it's for her friend's birthday. And they're coming over after dinner. So I mean, I probably can't cut into it before she blows out the candles. Orange whisk, first time using this. Let's see how it works. Oh God, maybe should have just used a fork. Whisk too big. I know, I need a baby whisk. That was the other thing on the list. <laughs> you have to be precise with oregano. Yeah, you do. Or else you might die. Is Betty happy she's cooking again? I think so, Death. I think she just likes to have her own space. I'm definitely happy being down here though. I like to have my own space too. The way that my dad put it was that we had two queen bees in the same hive. <laughs> and we were both used to our own space. But no one died, so I guess that's a good thing. Yes, Opteryx. I love it. That's the greatest emo ever. Okay, now the real question is, do we have a pastry brush? I have these silicone ones, but I don't know. These are weird to me still. Rook, thanks for the biddies, man. That's amazing. It makes sense. Yeah, it totally does. Okay, we're washing it up. Like nothing stays on these silicone brushes. It's weird. I think she would, Lemon. I honestly think she would. I think she's getting better about coming on. I'm impressed she came on today. Every day will kind of break her down a little bit, I think. <laughs> and then she won't be scared of it anymore. Ugh, like... Okay, I need a... I need a nice bristled brush. Cause this just does not work. Like how do you get in all the crevasses? Cooking with Lala. You are new, welcome. And thank you for the follow as well. Yeah, exactly. She's not going to be as shy anymore because she's talked to you guys for quite a while now. We'll break her down little by little. Betty will be like the stream mom. I think she secretly loves it, but who knows? 
Okay, I think that's a good. Let's kind of even it out. Let us pray for this pie that it turns out. Okay, so 400 for 20 minutes and then an hour at 350. Let's see how she goes. Should the chicken be skinless? I wouldn't. I always keep the skin on extinction just because it helps it stay more moist. And I like crispy chicken skin. But if that's what you bought is skinless, you'll be okay still. It's just not my first choice anymore. And even if you're going for like health in this meal, you can just take the skin off afterwards. But to me, it's more important to keep the chicken moist while cooking. Trist, someone stole your biddies, man. Okay, this is going in. We'll set our timer. We're not going to fudge it up. I would like to put something under it in case it goes over, but I don't have anything. I got nothing. Twenty minutes on the clock. Clapped, but does Betty know you? I'm not sure about that one. You're a little new still, but I'm sure she'll get to know you. Okay, so for our collie, we still need our capers, which we don't even have to chop up. Obviously, more of our parm cheese. But I might wait until closer to the end to put this on, just so it doesn't burn. Like, maybe we'll put this on when there's about 10 minutes left, because we are roasting at quite a high heat. And burnt cheese is not a good smell or a flavor. Fifteen minutes at eight hundred. Not even possible. Not in this oven. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> I just uh, did some math and decided to bake the pie this way. Black. Foil. That could work. I mean, there are sheet pans upstairs that I can run and grab. Because, yeah, I don't want to clean this oven when it's not even, like, my pie. Doing dishes and cleaning ovens, way different. <laughs> okay, so here's our view. We need some olive oil on here. We'll just toss it up. Oh yeah, we did do that on 420. I was like, calling an audible today. We're baking everything at 420 Fahrenheit. Don't be afraid to use quite a bit of olive oil on this either. That's what helps things brown and also creates more flavor. And keeps it moist. Don't be scared of fats, especially the good ones. Okay, so the only thing going on here right now is the capers and some salt and pepper. Thanks, Neil. A lot of people say that. So we don't want any of the brine because it's really strong. I don't know if I have enough capers even in this jar. I might have to go grab another one. 
Did I make my own pasta? Not today, Lala. I don't have an extruder to make the penne. But if it was a noodle or a ravioli, for sure I would have made it by hand. It's like one of my favorite, favorite things to make and eat. This caper jar is not being my friend. There we go. I'm probably just gonna split these up between the trays. Cause capers are pretty pungent. I don't wanna make this too, too salty. Oh, Fiskal, your nose is running. It's so spicy. That's how it should be, though. You did good. Put the foil on the sheet pan. Good call. And then we don't even have to wash the sheet pan. Okay, I'm going to finish seasoning this. And then I'll go grab that sheet pan so we don't have any oven disasters. Yeah, Elvin, that's going to be a long three weeks without you. I think you should request something for us to make together since you'll be gone so long. So let's start with a smaller amount of salt just because the capers are salty. We can top it up a bit later, because keep in mind, Parmesan cheese or Asiago also has quite a bit of salt in it compared to the softer cheeses. Do it Opterix. Just use a broom handle to drape it over. I've always tried to think of like what's the best way to kind of dry it out. That's a good one. Okay, let's give these a toss. Hey, Wakandian, how are you? And Julio, welcome. Or Julio. You have someone for me to meet. Who is it? Clapped. You gotta go because you have to wash the dishes. How tragic. Have a good one, dude. Okay, so spread this all out so that it's in one layer. That way it'll brown up really nice and nothing will kind of steam. Hakuna Matata. <laughs> Thank you. I love it. Simba. Now I really want to listen to Hakuna Matata. Yeah, Simba, I love it. You can't go wrong with the Lion King. Come on, bus. Hit those zones. Polly is seasoned. 
We will finish it with the parm later on during the roast. And then at the end is when we're gonna put on the lemon zest. Otherwise, that will burn, you guys, and it'll taste a little bit bitter if you put it on now. So that's why we wait till the end and then it'll stay nice and bright and fresh. Okay, I'm just gonna go grab that sheet pan real quick. BRB, one minute or less. Oh, that took some searching, but I got the perfect one. Oh man. Okay, I gotta transfer it onto this pan. I'm not used to only having the two oven racks. The pie is sizzling already though. Let's do this quick. So far, guys. Okie dokes. So next on the list, we will cook up our pasta. So I need to fill a pot with water and salt it. And then we'll season up our chicken after that and get it ready to pan fry. Because what do we got for time? 4.15. I think my peeps will be home pretty early as well, so... Might be an early end to the stream. I'm just gonna take my quick bathroom break right now and then we'll carry on. Thanks everyone for chilling so far. Okie dokes. Carry on my wayward son. I love that song. You want to make a lemon loaf now? Mmm, lemon poppy seed. So good. Okay, I'm just going to fill this pot with some hot water.
or more squares. Yum. Give us all of the desserts today. I want to try one of these tomatoes. Mmm. It's like caramel almost. Okay, so pot is about half full with water. I'm just going to turn this onto high to boil. We're going to put in a good amount of salt. I do like one and a half tablespoons worth. And that way it'll season the noodles as it cooks as well. I'm just going to cover that. So it goes faster too. Did Mies post her pup in here yet? Oh my god, so many puppers to look at. They're so cute. <laughs> but your cat is hilarious. It's like, I didn't do anything. And Mies, your doggo, aww. She looks like so cute and fluffy. Six month old little baby kitty. And Death, your dog is very, very cute. I like all of them. That dog was a bitch. <laughs> Those look so good, Death. What are you making today, man? I feel like you haven't posted what you've been cooking lately. I miss that. I need to know these things. Okay, while we're waiting, there's actually not much else to do. It feels weird. Like very weird to not have much to do. But I would like to still water my plants and stuff today. Time for kitchen yoga. Oh, that sounds good. Then we'll get all the creepers in here though, I think. We need story time. These burners freak me out. Like, I don't know why, but I always, whenever I hear a weird sound from the stovetop, I think it's gonna just explode. Break out some trivia. 420 official. Yes, my dude. It's true. 420. Okay, well, I'll fill up with some water. Let's see what I can come up with. We can try and find some fun facts. It's in the oven. Oh, you don't have any stories. I think I might. Oh, there's two minutes left. Are you sure 350 is not too high? It says 350. Okay. Does she sprinkle sugar on the pie before baking? We didn't. You can if you want, but. Was... But you could have. Yes. Yeah. If you want it a little bit sweeter, that'd probably be good to contrast the rhubarb. Steve, we don't want any creepers. Nope. We do not. I'm finding some stuff for you guys. I heard you talking about being terrified to make a pie. Yeah. Please do not. I got nothing. I spent 
probably 25 years of my life being terrified to make a pie. <laughs> and then I just went for it and see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. You do it. Yeah. Yeah. See, there you guys go. That's what Betty says. Don't be scared to make a pie because no. you'll regret it. You might just make the best pie ever. Okay, so pesto. Let's go over a little bit of pesto stuff. The original dish is called pesto alla Genovese. It's a sauce originating in Genoa, the capital city of Liguria in Italy. Practice makes perfect. That's so, so true. If at first you don't succeed, dust yourself off and try again. So pesto traditionally consists of crushed garlic, pine nuts, coarse salt, basil leaves, Parmesan cheese, and pecorino sardo, which is a cheese made from sheep's milk. Mmm, that'd be so, so good for a flavor contrast, like more earthy. And then all of that's blended together with olive oil. So like I said, you typically need more olive oil than the recipe calls for. Just because the ingredients that you use are going to vary all the time. Nice, Steve. You made a pie in high school, but nothing since then. <laughs> so the name is the past participle. of the Genovese verb pesta, which means to pound or crush, which was the original method of preparation. Pesta. Sounds good. It makes sense. Okay, let me turn down this oven and then we'll reset our timer. Going to 350 now for about an hour. Browning up nicely. Yeah, making pesto by hand. I thought about it today, but I was like, why wouldn't I just use the blender? So according to tradition, the ingredients are crushed or ground in a marble mortar through a circular motion with a wooden pestle. So if you guys don't know what that is, luckily I have one here. It's pretty small though, like there's no way I could make the pesto in that. So here's your mortar. This is a wooden one and this is the pestle. So you just go like this until it makes it really nice and smooth. Aw, Opteryx. I mean, some words for people, they just can't process it in their head. Oscillation. He's trying, though. That's so sad. Okay, so strictly speaking, pesto is a generic term for anything that is made by pounding. That is why the word is used for several pestos in Italy. Nonetheless, pesto alla Genovese, so the basil kind, remains the most popular pesto in Italy and the rest of the world. Holy smokes. See, I told you guys this boils fast. Okay, let's get our pasta into there. Give it a little stirzy. And I'm going to cook both of these bags and for measuring out dry pasta if you want to know like how much one serving is it's typically about half a cup of dry uncooked is one portion because it'll kind of double in size 
So I want quite a few portions here. So this will be like four cups will give me eight cups. Pretty much eight servings is how I go over that. And I actually got these two bags for three bucks at the store on Monday. I was like, that's a good price. Not a very expensive meal. Totally okay with having pesto penne leftovers. Yes, please. So we'll just give that a stir every couple of minutes. So pesto is thought to have two predecessors in ancient times going back as far as the Roman age. The ancient Romans used to eat similar paste called mortem, which was made by crushing garlic, salt, cheese, herbs, olive oil, and vinegar together. The use of this paste in the Roman cuisine is even mentioned in the appendix Vir Virgiliana, Virgiliana an ancient collection of poems where the author dwells on the details about the preparation of mortem, so pesto. During the Middle Ages, a popular sauce in the Genoan cuisine was egliata, which was basically a mash of garlic and walnuts, as garlic was a staple in the nutrition of Ligurians, especially for the seafarers. The introduction of basil, the main ingredient of modern pesto, occurred in more recent times and is first documented only in the mid-19th century, when gastronomist Giovanni Battista published his book La Cucinera, La Cucinera Genovese in 1863. That's pretty, that's pretty recent then, hey? That's amazing. Although likely originating from and being domesticated in India, basil took the firmest root in the regions of Liguria, Italy, and Provence, France. It was abundant in this part of Italy, though only when in season. That's why marjoram and parsley are suggested as alternatives when basil is lacking. So obviously that mixture of marjoram and parsley would kind of mimic that basil flavor, I'm guessing. Guys, Betty said move the pie to the middle of the oven. <laughs> I can't put hot things on the counter anymore. Good 
I suppose we should have started our timer for when we put the pass in and tested out that 10 minute time on the bag. But oh well, we'll carry on. Okay, so in French Provence, the dish evolved into the modern pea stew, which is a combination of basil, parsley, crushed garlic, and grated cheese, which is optional. The nuts are not included. So typically you would have a pea stew for somebody that is allergic to nuts. Because otherwise, why would you leave the nuts out? That's like one of the main flavors in it. And it's so, so good. What's up, Clapped? How is your dishwashing? Okay, so the word penne, penne pasta, literally means feather or quill. I could see it in like being a quill for sure, if that makes sense. Going over our fun facts. Clapped, everyone died. <laughs> Getting my strainer ready. And I need a plate for this chicken. Lemon. Just an onion. chicken here. They're just absorbing pesto packs. I know. I just find it always hilarious when it goes so quiet. Usually I can't keep up with you guys. Give this a little testy test. Will I play Fortnite with you? I can't. I would be terrible. I would for sure just die in the first couple minutes. <laughs> Lemon, you need to keep me on point. I told you I'm not a good pie baker. Still crunchy. We're about halfway there for the pasta. Oh, that looks good now. I think I might need two plates for this chicken like I need two pans to cook it. We're going in. So I have skin on breasts, <laughs> some chicken wings. This is like a mixed bag. Some legs. Got a little bit of everything in here. Okay, so four chicken breasts, two legs, and then four wings. 
Next chicken grill tonight. Okay, before I wash my hands, I'm just gonna pat the chicken off. That'll help it sear up really nice. You're teaching a May term course on building and flying drones. That's so cool. And you've never flown a drone before. <laughs> That's one thing I've never done either. It might be a little bit challenging, hey? Okay, chicken is dried off. I think I'm gonna do that so it fits better. That's a good way to do it, Opterix. Yeah, just uh, take it away, guys. You know more than me. <laughs> Having another taste of this, because the sound of it boiling is weird. We're about a minute out, so I'm not gonna start anything chicken-wise right now. I'm gonna strain the pasta, and then we'll go to seasoning. OMG, how are you today? Thanks for being here. There we go. strain this and then put it back into the pot. I'm doing well. Thanks for asking. Things are going good. We're just getting ready to season up our chicken. Now we need to quickly pour in some olive oil so that that pasta doesn't stick. So obviously it's still on that hot burner. okay to just sit out like that. It can cool off, that's okay as well. Good to go. So let's start with our salt. I think they already have a TV like that, Opterix. But it has like the fake smells, right? So it's not going to be the same. 
But yeah, that'd be amazing if you could like legit smell the smells in here right now. Instead of it just like releasing a similar aroma of like roasted chicken or something like that. So these are pretty big pieces of meat. I'm gonna season them generously with salt and pepper. Nice even coating. <laughs> Thanks, Death. I know it's been like a pork heavy week so far. So I think this meal is gonna taste good. Smells like gas in there, no, Trist. Why would it smell like gas? Yeah, exactly, Opterix. <laughs> She's gonna blow. Hurry, bail out. 4D streaming, love it. Yeah, who knows what's gonna come of all this. It's just the beginning, my friends. I'm excited to use this salt for the first time though. Should have used it on a turkey at some point. We might have to finish this chicken on the stove top, guys. So I'm a little worried about it. Just with so many things going in the oven. Unless I can somehow sneak an oven wrap that will fit in here. Maybe from upstairs. I did not realize that I only had two once I planned this meal. Chris, what are you doing, man? Better stop watching more TV, even though that's like the worst thing to do in the summer. So this is done. Done skis. We have about half an hour left on our pie. Hopefully it won't take that long because I want to start roasting soon. There we go, guys. There's our legs and wings, and there's our boobs. The bobs. Just making sure this pasta is not sticking together, which it seems to be okay. Also, stirring it will help it cool down keep it from kind of overcooking. I think we'll be good. We'll be good. You use your laptop. That's hilarious. That's what we've been doing the last like three months and now it feels so weird to watch like a big TV again. It's like, what do we do with this? Okay, I'm gonna go check for a sheet pan. I'll be right back, guys.
The rack has been jacked. Let's see. Please work. Oh yeah. We good, my friends. Everything is gonna go just fine. Just doing a mini cleanup and then we'll carry on. Keep eyeing up this pesto though, guys. The torture. You have a movie theater in your house? Trist, your house is like a castle. You love to sit on the floor. <laughs> yeah, it's nice to kind of take it anywhere in the house though, hey? Yay, Alvin, you made it. Safe and sound. Yeah, time to grab a beer and relax. Pretty excited for tomorrow's stream as well. It's been a minute since I made beef and barley soup. And then the whiskey apple crisp. So good. And I don't know though guys, there, there might be time to make some vanilla ice cream tomorrow for the stream. I wasn't sure if I bought cream and I found there is a liter in the fridge. So I'm thinking some vanilla ice cream will be in the works tomorrow as well. Steve, you wish you had a beer? Well, what's holding you back, man? And this is, this is the Mahim. It's pretty big. I've used it a, a couple times, not as much as I should have. I literally just did that, Elvin, before you got here. Ah. I was like, come here, pesto. Almost time to use you. Aw, Opteryx. I know, it's funny how you get attached to those little things, hey? I think one of the first ones I ever used, Sammy got, it was the Simpsons fish, so the orange fish with the three eyes. It was like this big. Cutest thing ever. But yeah, eventually like the fins broke off of it and it just wasn't looking good after a while. Okay, here is Das ice cream maker. So it is pretty noisy. I think I would have to do it in the other room tomorrow. Just like plug it in on the floor. But here's the thing that turns. And then this bowl, so... You need to freeze this overnight, and that's what helps make the ice cream. So I'm going to put that in the freezer now so it's done. And that way we'll, we're all prepared. And hopefully it works. Aw. Orange swirls. That sounds cool. Now 
now you just gotta upgrade, Opteryx. Moving on up in the world. To the freezer. It doesn't work that well. Like, I'm very picky about my ice cream now. After using, like, the $20,000 machines at school and in restaurants, it's like, what is this? Like, this does not work that good. If you guys are wondering why it doesn't work that good. McCraig, thank you for the follow. Thank you, thank you, and welcome. So ice cream is always smooth when it gets frozen very quick. So honestly, the best way to make ice cream is to use dry ice in like a mixer of sorts because it freezes it almost instantly and that way the ice particles are very very small and that way it'll be really nice and smooth on your tongue compared to this thing will take about half an hour to make a batch of ice cream which that is quite a long time and then the ice particles are going to be a lot larger chili chocolate ice cream yum i did a chocolate peanut butter ice cream in this before i remember that it was very very good flash freeze yes exactly i need to get my hands on some of that stuff We're good. We're set up for tomorrow. Yeah, I know. Hey, Elvin, like, it's the worst. Okay, let's give this another stir make sure it's cooling off nice and it's not continually steaming in there. We don't want mushy pasta. Pie is looking amazing. I really don't think it's gonna take another half an hour. How about a Kate is baked stream? Not today, man. Not today. I typically don't do it until like 8 or 9 p.m. at night. That's my wind down time. <laughs> Bait Kate stream with pineapple pizza and well done fillets. I will take the pineapple pizza, but you can have the well done fillets, Elvin. For you, that is my gift. <laughs> Kate is baked. Soon, guys, soon. It's gonna happen. We'll make some edibles whenever it becomes legal, just so I don't get in trouble on here. A well done filet, re-gifted, yeah. <laughs> Open the garbage can, goodbye. It's not legal, no it's not yet, Lemon. Like not recreationally. And I don't wanna get in trouble like Twitch wise doing it on stream since it's not legal in Canada yet. I don't wanna get banned for that. That would be so silly of me. But for right now, like, we can still go into the dispensaries and they don't even ask you for ID, honestly, every time I've gone in there. And you just pick whatever you want. There's a ton to choose from, honestly. But yeah, it's not legal. I don't get it. 
Viewn, thanks for the biddies. Welcome in. Did you stream today? And if so, how was it? It was the most painful stream you've ever done. Oh no. What happened? I'm so sad for you. Yesterday was rough for me too. <laughs> Trist, you can't use a debit card. Can you in Canada? Nope, so it is cash only still here. Wow. I mean, it was very, very strict when we were in Toronto. When Sammy tried to go into a couple of dispensaries, like even though you had your ID with you, they wouldn't let you in unless you were already a member of that dispensary. It's very weird how it works out here. Canada sucks. <laughs> Thank you. View and you tried a new game that was hyped. Turns out it was way too dark to stream and use cheap psychological tropes to try and scare you. Lame. But that would be like a good review to post on YouTube of the game. Like that would be a very honest review. Tris, that's like how it was when we were in Vegas. You walk in the front door, security guard is waiting for you there, they check everything for you, and then you walk into the actual store part. Pesto chicken pasta is the best though. I agree. It's been forever since I've eaten this and I'm very, very excited. No problem, Viewn. Yeah, do like random little YouTube review videos of games that people say are good. Sometimes they'll be good and other times they won't be. But it's awesome to let people know when the hype isn't as real as most people think it is. Yeah, free healthcare does not suck. That is a good point. Even though it's not completely free. Frog is greater than frog. I feel like that's a snake though. Yeah, I suppose it depends on the place. I mean, we're in a pretty quiet little town, I guess it is. So they're not very strict with anything here, I don't think. We're out in the sticks. We don't want to see death die, Trist. I need to check this guy again. Oh, she's bubbling up now. Okay, now I can put the lid back on this since it's cooled off and I will be cooking the chicken on these two front burners. can't really roast or cook everything at the same time until that pie is out. So we will wait. Nice, Rook. Good luck with the OBS. It's pretty simple to use. It's a really good program. Have a good one, my dude. And thanks for the biddies. Seriously, it is much appreciated. You would want to see the effects of the butter, <laughs> but not the eating part.
That is very true, Lemon. Yeah, they make it easy for the tourists. Wine and weed is a thing. <laughs> it's looking good. You want to peek? It's just like it just kind of started to bubble Super. in the middle there. Good. good. But it should be like, like 20 minutes left. I yeah. don't even You think it'll go that whole way? Mm, like maybe another 10 once it's bubbling really good. Because the bottom crest looks okay. Yep. Okay. It smells good. Okay, we're almost there with the pie, guys. Betty, say hi. Oh, you're coming in and saying hi? Oh, okay. She's coming in and saying hi. Okay, I just don't know this camera thing. Where am I supposed to be looking right, right there? there? You can see on the monitor oh. in the back. Okay. Hi. <laughs> Betty says hi. She made a pie. I made a pie. I watered some plants. Do you want me to water the yours out here or not? Sure. Yeah? They probably need it. Okay. It's been sunny. Thank okay. you. Yeah, I heard you a little story about pie. Never be scared. No, pie is scary. No. It's really not. Do you have a jug out here or not? No, I've never had a watering jug. Oh. <laughs> okay. I've never had one in my life. Okay. The pie smells delicious. Opterix, it's working. Death, the edibles make you more normal than weird. That's hilarious. I almost tickled Sam to death once when we made some edibles with this Reese cupcake mix from the store. He died almost. He's like, I can't breathe. You have to stop. <laughs> yes, death. Yeah, no fear for the pie until one hits you in the face. Always a good time. Has anyone here actually done that to someone? Because I feel like that would be like a good feeling. Has to be like a very creamy pie though. But it's just like the sound of a, the slap when it hits is like pfft. epic. Hey Duncan, how are you? You guys have, what the heck? You dunked your sister's face in her fake birthday pie. Why was it fake? What kind of trickery are you guys pulling here? They make ingredients to make edibles? I mean, not really, Tris. We were just super lazy. So we just picked up like a boxed Reese's cake mix and we're like, this will work. And then we just mixed in the butter with the cake mix and into the icing. Of course, Lemon, of course. I will take a picture of the pie and post it. Good night. Thanks for being here as always. Viewn, you made a real cake and a fake pie with lots of cream. Nice. That's a good way to do it. That way you don't waste ingredients. <laughs> Love it. See, Opterix, that's the one place that I've seen pie get thrown into people's faces was when I was at in school. I believe they did almost the same thing. Like, it was some kind of competition. And then the students were able to throw pies into some of the teachers' faces. Epic. Or, yeah, good, if it was the other way around, poor students... They think they knew what they were dealing with. Did not have a clue. Sammy. Sammy's Hi. home. Honey. Hi. What you making? What you doing? Tomats. Just waiting on the pie. Mmm. Mm -hmm. mm. Hi guys. What is on the bottom shelf with the glasses in the yellow mustard container? What yellow mustard container? 
I have my protein in there. That's like my stuff shelf. I don't know what you're saying, man. Yeah, and the whipped cream gets in your eyes. Oh, I can't imagine that like greasy feeling. <laughs> Oh, man, death. That's a good way to do it. That's a great way to do it, death. Yellow mustard color container. This thing? This is just a protein shaker. We keep them handy because we have smoothies like Monday to Friday. And there's just a little shaker ball in there. Yeah, it's a pie or be pied world out there. Watch out. Yeah, that one is okay. But it's when the stove is empty that it just like completely reflects off. We're testing it out. Nice fiscal. Worked off some of that jerk chicken. In the cupboard, Trist. This. Okay, we'll go through everything until we find it. Whey protein isolate. That's the one. I hope that's what you needed. Oh, he's fooling around with the lights. Maybe they'll work better. That's what you guys wanted? Yeah, we use isolate here so it doesn't affect my belly as much. It's easier to digest than all of the dairy in the way. It was so spicy. That's good fiscal. That means you burn calories as you were eating it. <laughs> Health. Oh, man. The pie is looking good. I can't wait to take it out and actually start cooking and finish this din up. How do I want a plate today? I feel like it would be nice on a plate still. Maybe I'll use the same plate as yesterday. Watch out. I only have two of these guys. So I think that's the one I'll use. Get some nice contrast again. Bury the beard. Yeah, guess what? We have to shave it off again today. That works good, I think. That works good. Yeah, that works good. Good job, Sammy. How will we play today? Giant rocks, pretty much. Yeah, I think that pie is going to be coming out in the next couple of minutes. Beard plating? Ugh. Gosh. <laughs> She's vacuuming the wrong things. Wax his beard off? Tristan, are you insane? Hell no! <laughs> yeah, that would be so mean. No! <laughs> You're crazy, Trist. My beard is way too thick to wax. That first wax strip hit my face. I'll punch out the person that punched <laughs> my face. Really I get punched in the face. Hashtag wax it. Wax his butt too. He doesn't have a hairy butt. We're okay in that in that department. 
You guys are like torture. Harry everywhere else though. <laughs> yeah. And no hair. <laughs> yeah, it all fell down. <laughs> Epi lady, oh man. Yeah, those little machines that like pull the stuff out. What the hell? Terrifying, you guys. Is it time? I think it's time. I want it to be time. I need to get this stuff roasting since these guys are home. This looks unreal to me, you guys. Like, literally perfection. And it's a really good thing that I put the pan underneath because it definitely went over. Are you ready? Like, what? Look at that flower. Drop the pie. No. It's so... Beautiful. Okay, I need to take a photo. That's Betty's pie, guys. See what I mean? It's like I can't compete with that. I am not responsible for this pie. I'm only responsible for the baking of it. But dang, yeah, she did good. Okay, I'm gonna crank this oven up while I'm taking a photo. 4.50. Eight minutes, it says. Inspiring. Thank you, yeah, that, that washing of the eggs was something else. Just wait till I post this in Discord, Lemon's gonna lose it. Literal perfection. If that's not a springtime pie, I don't know what is. Them slippers though, I know. Safety slippers. Okay, this guy can just chill here for now. I'll turn the camera back up though. I'm so impressed right now. Hello, Frankie Five from France. Welcome in. Yeah, these slippers are the new Gucci. Cooking safety slippers. This is a thing. If you didn't know, now you know. So I think the cauliflower will take probably about 20 minutes. So I think we could also start doing the chicken right now. Because like I said, it needs to rest before we even cut into it. Hey, Silent. Have I ever made Indian food? I have. And it's actually one of my favorite things to eat. What is your favorite Indian dish? I think my favorite one would be either a korma or a vindaloo. I mean, butter chicken is good. Like, it's always a go-to, but I think there's more flavors than that in Indian cuisine. Like, that should not be a favorite. That's just, that's just like a staple. Masoor dal, yum, yeah. That sounds so good. I love the dals as well.
Paneer tikka masala. Mmm. Yep. Can't go wrong with trees. Shrimp vindaloo. I've never had shrimp vindaloo. Alu paratha. Yes. Have you guys ever had the Kashmiri rice? Because that's like one of my favorite rices to have. I'm going to turn my pans on now. Boat, medium high. We just want to brown the chicken skin. We don't want to like burn it, right? And let's use some grapeseed oil in there. Oh, dosas. I've had those twice in my life. The first time I had a dosa was actually in Paris when I visited my friend that worked there. My friend from culinary school, very cool story. So she went and worked in Paris afterwards and I went to visit her and she took me out for Indian food, like just strictly vegetarian Indian food. And she's like, you need to have a dosa. I was like, I've never had a dosa before. And it just like blew my mind. I've never done a seafood stream. No, I haven't done too many seafood streams, hey? I mean, I'm doing salmon on Friday, but that's still different. <laughs> yeah, mysteriously vanishing nan. What happened? We don't know. Wild salmon or farmed? It's actually farmed, sadly. I am picky with my salmon though. Like I like the fattier Atlantic salmon, but to be honest, I like the one good salmon that I've had from BC that did, wasn't like overly strong tasting was a couple months ago here that I got from a family friend. The same person that we made the pie for today. But I think when it comes to like salmon season here, I'm gonna be going fishing. I would really love to catch my own fish. Especially the salmon because they're so plentiful. How much the is lobster there on the island? Oh, it would cost quite a bit. I should make a biryani or a palau. I, I need to make a biryani. That's one of my favorite things as well. Yes, walleye. I used to catch that all the time when I was younger. Love, love it. No way, Elvin. You're actually not allowed to cook lobster on stream. Are you joking me? Okay, I'm going to bring this pie upstairs so I can have more space. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, we back. How much is crab? Crab is still pretty expensive, but we still want to catch our own here. It is plentiful. We just need to take the time to do it. Try steelhead. I do enjoy steelhead trout as well. That's a good one too. It's not going to burn up. Don't worry, silent. I know my timings. She ain't even smoking yet. But I am 
I'm gonna turn up the hood vent, guys. It's gonna get a little cray in here, I think. Definitely gonna need our splash screen. Chicken always likes to splash, no matter what. Hey Rush, how are you, dude? Good to see you again. Hey, we're smoking. I'm gonna turn this down. I have to open another window, Sammy. Inside down to start, guys. So the boobs are in. Microwave cow, you guys are hilarious. to get our cauliflower into the oven. I looked so mad when you said that microwave cow. Yeah, Chef Mike, he's got this. Holly's going in. might space out the oven racks a little bit better right now. Yeah, now that the pie is done. It's looking good. You're up for worky rush. It's time. Oven right now. That way we all have 
chicken breast to eat for dinner and we'll use the legs and the wings for leftovers. The oil from the chicken splashing kind of scared me, keeping it on the top wrap close to the element. I don't want to start any fires. Extinction! You meant to make pesto chicken, but you forgot the pasta. No! It's okay, it's still going to be delicious. You're just having like a lower carb version. Rice would work. Yeah, that's a good option. That could be a quick one. Save yourself. The handle on the pan melt in the oven. No trist, silly. It's cast iron. A savory Dutch baby. That's something I have not had yet. And they look so, so good. Maybe Sammy and I will make one of those on breakfast stream together. This needs a flip. Looking fab. I got to turn it down. Try and finish it in the pan. Timer is set. And the rest of the din will come together pretty quick. Ditch baby though. Yeah, just ditch the baby, Elvin. Very, very true, Opterix. I quite enjoy that. Thanks for the biddies, Armored Jim. Yeah, new place, way better internet connection. There should be no lag or anything like that now, and it feels amazing. Okay, I'm going to post the pie in Discord right now for lemon. Yeah, good deal. <laughs> no legs, Kappa. So, Extinction, does this mean that you are actually cooking with Kate right now? Because I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's so good that the stream is actually five seconds ahead of me. Insane! and stuff. We're working now.
Is that true, Opteryx? Is that the truth? Yeah, you guys love that sizzle sound? Too good. Too good. Can't forget our farm for our cauliflower. So I pulled that back out. It's true, Opteryx? That's pretty cool. Be a pretty crazy experience for sure. Okay, I think I'm gonna take my second bathroom break and then we'll carry on with the rest of din. We should be good in the next 10 ish minutes for sure, Z's. I mean, I hope so at least. The oven is pretty packed right now though. Hey, I'm here. <laughs> Speed of light confirmed. Oh my god, Elvin. The sizzle sounds have started, so that's a good sign for us. Elvin, what was your favorite thing from Milk Bar today? That's insane, Trist. Teslas are such crazy cars. I would own one. Maybe one day, guys. Would I like a glass of wine? No, I'm good right now. I'm gonna sip my water. Thank you, though. Oh, yum. Cereal milk soft serve with cornflake crust. Too, too good. Rush, my dude. Thank you for the sub. So much love today. Thanks, Rush. 
first you helped me out setting up my stream and now you subbed how can i repay you thanks man feeling the love <laughs> you just wanted the onion let's be serious Elvin, it was super hot today too. Nice, yeah. You gotta have ice cream on those hot days. Send them half the pie, yeah. And I'd be banished forever. Yes, yachts. Welcome in. We already have one pan of chicken in the oven. Just we can't fit any more stuff in there right now, so that other pan will go in afterwards. So for now, that chicken's chilling with us. There's about a less than a minute left on the timer. So we'll kind of rotate everything and check it then. I should get my thermometer out to check the temp of the chicks. The thermometer that doesn't work. I think I still have one in my night. Okay, there's one more place to check. Not successful. So we will use the old school one. Let's just hope it's calibrated. Yes, we'll just give Rush 3.14. We'll give them all of the pie. <laughs> yes, save you a wingy dingy. Okay, let's get some rotation action. Let's temp this. I'm gonna leave my one cloth there so I don't burn my board again. But dang, those boobs are looking good. Okay, let me see this other one. So we want to go in the thickest part of the meat, obviously near the middle. We're going to cook this to around 145 Fahrenheit. Did I say boobs? I probably said boobs. That's a lot of food. I know I always make like eight portions. That way we have leftovers. We're climbing up. We're at about 125. So a little bit more to go. Probably about seven more minutes. And then the collie can finish on its own and then we'll sprinkle the cheese on and the chicken can rest before we cut into it. Seven. Trist, why don't you like leftovers? It's like the greatest thing to eat. It's so easy. Day old boobs. 
You guys are silly. So I looked at this thermometer first and it's sitting at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. I was like, that's not calibrated because there's no way it's that hot in here right now. To the garbage, which you, but luckily I had two. You're willing to gamble that tomorrow for lunch is going to be a badass salad with chicken. That does sound delicious, but I think I made too much pasta. So it's going to be probably as close to the same meal as tonight. Easy mode. Oh, that makes sense, Trist. That's fair if someone ruined them for you. You're scarred for life. It's true, leftover chicken is not the best as the amount of days accrue. But yes, good point, Opteryx. Stuff like soups and like baked things, like casseroles and stuff, always taste better the next day. Some kind of sorcery. Feeding, hey Kev, how's, how's it going? What's up? What, old pizza? So you're saying you don't like cold pizza? I am okay with cold pizza. Just not the crust parts, it's dry. Elvin, leftover chicken, just throw it in a soup. There you go. You just gotta get creative with it. What is up, Kev? I'm gonna get my uh, plating station set up here. Like I said, I'm not serving the tomatoes hot or cold. They're just gonna be lukewarm. Sounds good, Rush. Thank you for being here and thank you for the sub, my dude. Have a wonderful day at work. And thank you for all the help. Talk to you soon. Oh, Mantris, that's brutal. And yes, yachts. Chicken salad and tuna salad the next day. Needs that marination. Oh man, Kev, that's not good. You felt like you were going to die. I don't really get that stuff that bad, like heartburn and stuff, but I have heard some horror stories from people. I'm sad for you. So you do, have, do you have to like take something to kind of keep it under control? Yes, Gimp. I mean, I typically just use a metal pizza pan to reheat it, the one that has the holes in it, at around like 350 Fahrenheit for like 10 minutes and then the crust always crisps up again. It's always an easy way to do it. Oh yeah, that's so true and now you can't eat greasy foods. What has the world come to? For like ever? Or you just have to like keep it tamed down for now. That's brutal. Nice yachts. I like your style. <laughs> Stay out of the south. Liz with the follow. Welcome in. All right, Elvin. Hope you have a great night. Thanks for being here. And when do you leave for your trip? K 
Okay, we got just under two minutes now until I'm pretty sure the chicken's gonna come out. You leave Monday, okay. I will keep that noted in my mind. Hey, Nicholson, what's going on, guys? We're almost, almost ready to plate up dinner. So you guys are coming in at the right time. <laughs> Thanks, Liz, I know. Some people love them. Other people are like, why did you draw your eyebrows on with Sharpies? But we don't care what those haters think. We're just here to cook. Yeah, haters gonna hate. Taters gonna tate. Every time. The chicks. Love that sizzling in the pan. So I can just feel it and they are done for sure. Just need a pair of tongs. These are just gonna come off and rest. And then I'll probably heat up the pasta with the pesto in this frying pan with all of the amazing chicken juices. That's not a bad thing. Oh, does the camera actually fog up when I open the oven now? Ah, oh, Cubby, you made it in. Nice to see you. Welcome, welcome. Just for a second or two. Okay, thanks, Gim, for letting me know. So this pan's gonna go back over to the stove top. But first we are going to finish dressing our cauliflower. So you can see how it's charring up really nicely, just a little bit. So we're gonna put our Parmesan cheese on there now and hopefully it'll melt in and get nice and crispy. I've never made this before though, so we'll see how it goes. Thanks for the biddies, on dog. We'll just crumble the pieces of cheese over top. You can put as much or as little as you want. think this is a good amount. So on to the next tray and then like I said we're not going to put the lemon zest on until after this comes out of the oven. Boom we're almost there. Sizzle though. Tris with the bitties. Thanks, guys. Yeah, everyone's at work. Glad you guys come home to watch me though. Hopefully I don't make you too, too hungry. Hey, back in. Just gonna wash up my hands because they're all cheesy.
cheese hands, not a bad thing. Extinction, you're gonna go eat. Your wife says it's good, but you don't believe her. <laughs> Cooked pesto does look weird, which is why I'm just kind of tossing it in to the pasta afterwards. I'm not actually gonna cook it too much. Have a good one, Extinction. Hopefully catch you later in the week. Opterix, your students tell you you're cheesy all the time. That's a good thing, though. At least you're not, like, lame. I'd rather be cheesy than lame. And yes, the love for cheese in this stream is large. We love cheese here. Bye, Extinction! So I'm thinking a couple more minutes to finish off the cauliflower. Why don't we start to heat up our pasta? So there was a little bit of juices in the pan. I don't know if you guys could see that. I'm just going to give it a try and see how salty it is, and then we'll go from there. Chicken juice. Mm. Mm -hmm. Just like concentrated chicken flavor. I'm into it. Tris, eating extra sharp cheddar. The best way to have it. So let's spoon some of these noodles in. They're still a little warm, so that's a good thing. of pushing the limits on that pen. <laughs> and that holly is good. I don't want the cheese to burn. So I'm just going to turn it off now and it'll just continue to cook while we finish the pasta. Thanks, Cryptic. I know, we, we checked out one of them earlier, if you guys want to skip. This is my food tattoo. It's a beat. It says Bon Appetit. I'm committed to this cooking thing. Slice up our chicken momentarily. You thought it was a radish close enough. I love radishes too. Don't go cheap. Yeah, never go cheap on tattoos. Not worth it.
noodles are almost warm. Almost time to toss. <laughs> Liz. Yeah, what they don't know won't kill them. What, Opteryx? That's cool. What is she doing over there? Why is she being hilarious like that? <laughs> oh man. Scary cooking. Here, let's give this another stir. Soon, my friends, soon. Oh man, don't start the war with the Packers. <laughs> Just straight up, no. Astrophysics test. Good night, Opteryx. Thanks for being here. Check back on my Insta to see the plate up. Pesto is going in. That is the lovely stuff that we made earlier. It's pistachio pesto. I did pistachios instead of pine nuts. Get a nice bunch in there to start and see how it coats. in mind there is cheese in the pesto so you don't want to cook it too much because it'll start to stick to the pan. Seriously, so good. Like, 
really, really good. Like perfectly cheesy, nutty, creamy, herby. Here's the collies. So all I'm gonna do is just sprinkle the lemon zest over top now. I will keep it nice and fresh and bright. Now onto the plate. Mm. That's amazing, Liz. Thank you. I love compliments like that. It means a lot to me. Oh yeah, Yahtzee, there's a couple in the dishwasher upstairs. I love how you guys notice that stuff. Okay, so let's get a nice scoop of pasta down. It's plate up time. So you wanna nicely pile our pasta in the middle. Make a little bed for our chicken. This smells so good, guys. I really wish you could smell this and taste it right now. It's a great springtime meal for sure. Siri, you're not invited to the party. Okay, so next up, let's slice one of these boobs off. You can take this one right here. I always kind of go on an angle. It just makes it nicer for a presentation. And I know you guys are probably wondering why they sat here for so long, but as you can see, there's still steam coming out of it. So it didn't even cool off. Just kept all the juices inside there. And then we just put it on our knife like that, kind of fan it out, and then we'll place that on top. Like that. Sometimes this piece, oops, gotta eat that. You can just turn it the other way because it likes to fall off. Or if you can, make a little bed and just nestle it in there. Kind of go like this. Fan it out. And now onto our cauliflower. I'm just gonna make like little piles of this around the plate. The cheese crisped up really nice. It made like little parm chips almost, if you guys can see it. I know the color contrast right now is not amazing, but wait until we put the tomatoes on the plate and you'll be happy. There's a lot of white happening. And you can just nestle these guys kind of in wherever you feel. Put a couple together and this is like your amazing contrast to all the other flavors on this dish but we're gonna let the chicken and the pasta just speak for itself if you want you can put like a nice dollop of the pesto just in the middle of the chicken Just like that, so they know what it is. I think that looks pretty good, my peeps. I 
I'm not making the sourdough for tomorrow, Gimp, but typically I have my own starter. She's in the fridge. Yeah, good plating always makes it taste better. Okay, let me just take a quick photo before we mount into this. For the munch more pesto oh thanks Yahtzee I mean I like to keep my plating quite simple let the food speak for itself so going in with some collie and tomato to start mmm cauliflower is like buttery The contrast of the cheese, perfect little crunch. Our pasta coated in our homemade pesto. Mm. Perfectly al dente still, not overcooked and mushy. That's exactly what you want. And then our chicken which I used a little bit of herb salt today instead of just plain. So let's see if that actually put any flavor into there. Mm-hmm. It actually worked. It's a little bit of herb flavor. So it was basil, oregano, thyme, and savory in the herb salt mix. And it kind of just pulled everything else together because there is time in the tomatoes that were roasted as well. And that is it, guys. Thanks for chilling for another Cook with Kate stream. This is amazing. And that's pretty awesome that Extinction went to the store during my stream, picked up all the ingredients, and tried to recreate this at home. That's what I want to happen. I just noticed that there was chicken juices leaking <laughs> almost onto my notebook. Okay, sushi day is on, you said, Trist. Shall we go raid? Okay, sushi day it is. All of my peeps in here that might be new, go check out my channel page after this or right now. All of my social media links are on there and the invite link to our Discord server is there. So every single recipe that I make is in there. And if there's something you have a question for cooking wise, that's where you can message me as well. So thanks for all the newbies being here and chilling with us today. It's always great having new people in here. Punk with the follow, welcome in. Liz, welcome. Thanks, Jokery. Thanks, guys. We're going to go raid sushi day now another fellow cooking streamer who is awesome. Trist, I hope you are proud of this plate because this was for you. Good night, my peeps, and hopefully catch you tomorrow. Same place, same time. We're doing beef and barley soup, garlicky, cheesy, sourdough, pull apart bread, a maple, whiskey apple crumble and homemade vanilla ice cream yay trist send in the love okay get your onions ready we're going in 